Good evening, friends, on this Thursday evening. Uh, we are so excited to welcome you once again on our platform, the Wesley Guild SA Facebook page. Um, please note uh, that it is Women Thursday, Thursday where we talk to women about issues that affect women, but also without the Valele Amato Jagapandle. Today's topic that we are going to be talking about is Workers have rights to um, how to deal with human rights violation and unfair discrimination in the workplace. And the person who is going to be taking us through the violations, discrimination, and eventually human rights is none other than the magnificent, the wonderful, the gorgeous, the smart, the intelligent, uh, Ms. Hulumeni. But I will introduce her a little bit later on. As it is the norm, call everybody. Call your children, everybody who's looking for a job, everybody who's in a job, everybody who's just lost a job. I want to believe that each and every person is going to learn from the topic today. Uh, so in order for us to talk and start our conversation, let us please close our eyes and invoke the Holy Spirit in prayer. Lord God, on this chilly and wet evening in the Western Cape, we come before you adoration and such graciousness, giving you all the thanks we can master, mighty God, and bringing all your children from all walks of life, from not only the Western Cape or South Africa or Africa, but every single person around the globe who will one day, it is my belief, get hold of this conversation and learn one or two things from it. Lord, we ask that you, your Holy Spirit, and your Son cover us. You become one with us, and you become a part of this conversation. That you cover your daughter, Uma Mumbat, that she may talk things of that come from you, that she may talk about his or that we are going to learn from. And that's in a funny matter. That we we take at least one thing, and that this conversation may change. The lives of your children. We thank you, Lord, for this platform, and we ask that you continue to be with us up until we end this conversation and beyond. And we ask this in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, just so everybody is aware, and you are not finding this conversation, this conversation is a partnership of the Wesley Guild SA together with Women of Africa Arise. Forum. And we, it, it is also in partnership with the Women's Manyano Organization. So, this very conversation and all our Thursday conversations are dedicated to women as, uh, as part of their 91 days of activism. Um, so, this is a joint effort of not only us as young people, but different other organizations. And it is live streamed on our search media on Facebook page. So friends, I told you that we have Umama U Dombente Mbatakolumeni, who is a social justice for women uh, owner. That's an organization that she owns. She is a champion for social justice. She's a member of the Eastern Cape Council of Churches. And part of her work says she is an executive director for social justice for women. She is a chairperson for gender equality for women in Africa Arise. She is a human rights defender and a strong promoter for gender equality and inclusion. And she has used her voice to take a stand against human rights violation, gender-based violence, unfair discrimination, and she mobilized action to advance the rights of women and girls from all walks of life. She has been very much affected by the struggles and suffering that women and girls face. Um, and as we live in a society that often refuses to respond to human rights violations, gender-based violence, racial discrimination, and all forms of unfairness that women and children experience. And this, believe you me, is just a snippet of what Umama does. So welcome, Mama, to the platform. We are so happy to have you. Wow. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it is a great honor and a privilege for me to be your guest uh, this evening to come and present to this honorable uh, platform. Today's topic, uh, workers have rights to. 
how do you deal with human rights violation and unfair discrimination in the workplace? Uh, throughout this week, in preparation for today, I have been reflecting on all the incredible women I have encountered throughout my life, both those who have made an impact on me through personal relationships, those who have shaped me to be the person that I am today, in particular, my mom, my sisters, and all women in South Africa and abroad who have contributed in a meaningful way. And as I was preparing, immediately a scripture came to my mind. The very stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. It was on a Saturday morning on 6 February 2016 on this day that my human rights were violated, my personal brand was damaged, my professional integrity tarnished during the job interview. I was born and raised in South Africa. Growing up as a young girl in Guazulu Natal, I was brought up by both my parents, mom and dad, coming from a respectable family, six girls, at home and myself being the youngest. I had a wonderful childhood. My parents instilled in us values, integrity, respect, humility, Ubuntu, and they believed in good quality education. I was crowned Miss Personality, participated in a number of beauty pageants well accomplished career wise and climbed the corporate ladder, obtained a number of accolades. Today's topic, as we are aware, is about human rights in the workplace. In South Africa, May is proclaimed as a workers' month, hence, today's topic, how to deal with human rights violation and unfair discrimination in the workplace. Today, my role is to empower women, women in the world of work, because iron sharpens iron. Women in the workplace have been quiet for a very long time. But today, I want to pay particular emphasis to young women in the workplace or entering the world of work. As a young person, you must feel proud of who you are. You must feel good about yourself and your achievements. And you have a right to speak about any atrocities and it does not matter who the other person is. It is now time to speak truth to power. In my presentation, I'm going to give examples on how to fight unfair discrimination and sexual harassment in the workplace. But I also believe that men should be part of these dialogues because if we are going to bring about change, we do need men alongside us. This requires behavioral changes from men as this behavior is embedded in patriarchy. Power imbalances are evident in the workplace. Statistics has shown that men are in leadership positions. Because of this power imbalance, some have become corporate psychopaths and political psychopaths. Moving to gender-based violence. What is gender-based violence? Gender-based violence and sexual harassment are both a violation of a person's, a woman's, a girl's right to life and human dignity. Gender-based violence knows no race, no class, no status. It happens to people from all walks of life 
behind high walls, in academia, in corporate boardrooms, domestic work, and in every institution where there are power imbalances. This remains underreported for various reasons, such as fear of victimization or possible loss of income. So what is sexual harassment? In a nutshell, sexual harassment is a conduct that makes the recipient feel uncomfortable, unacceptable behavior. Sexual harassment can be divided into the following categories, physical, verbal, nonverbal, quid procure, which means this for that, you give me something in exchange of something, including advances, isolation, comments, messages, bullying, many actions that make the work environment unbearable. On the 21st of June, 2019, the International Labor Convention, also known as the ILO in Geneva, adopted a new convention and recommendation concerning the elimination of violence and harassment in the world of work. This convention seeks to combat and eradicate workplace violence and sexual harassment. South African law also prohibits any form of sexual harassment or violence in the workplace. It is seen as an unfair labor practice or unfair discrimination on the basis of sex, gender, or sexual orientation. And it has been described by the Labor Appeal Court as the most heinous misconduct in the workplace. There are many other treaties and protocols which have been signed by many countries and South Africa is a signatory to these treaties. And yet these injustices continue unabated. Just to mention a few international treaties there is the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, SIDAO, 1979, SADC Declaration and Gender Protocol. Now, coming to the South African laws, just to mention a few, the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa. Here in South Africa, we have a very progressive uh, constitution. The Labor Relations Act, the Employment Equity Act, and the Basic Conditions of Employment Act. Just to mention a few laws that protect uh, the employers and the employees in the workplace. An employer that does not address allegations of human rights violation, unfair discrimination in the workplace may be deemed to have contravened the law. So if the employer does not respect all the laws that I have detailed, that organization or that employer can be seen to have violated the law. Consequently, the employer may be liable to pay damages or compensation to the victim. When the hashtag movement, the Me Too, and my next total shutdown began, many women felt optimistic as stories of abuse, sexual assault, women's rights violation accumulated in the media. Men were exposed. Some lost their jobs, others were demoted, and many faced public embarrassment. So this is not just a South African issue, but it is a global issue. Just to quote a few cases, there is a Harvey Weinstein sexual abuse case. During his career, 
Harvey Weinstein is a film producer. He exploited his influential position to, to commit criminal sexual acts, including rape. In October 2017, the New York Times reported that dozens of women accused Harvey Weinstein of rape, sexual assault, and sexual abuse over a period of at least 30 years. So it means for a period of 30 years, he was involved in these activities. Over 100 women in the film industry accused Harvey Weinstein of such atrocities. Following the investigations, he was dismissed from the Weinstein Company and other professional associations and retired from public view. Weinstein is 60 years old and is currently serving a 23 year prison sentence following his February 2020 conviction on charges of rape, committing criminal acts on his employees and women in the film industry at large. There is another South African case which I would like to quote, that of Grant Thornton, an accounting organization was embroiled in what was being dubbed as the sex test controversy which officially began in March, 2018. A former director of the organization blew the lead on what she called rampant harassment in the high echelon of the organization. She instituted legal action. She speaks about the trauma. She is a very well-educated black woman but she cannot celebrate the pinnacle of her career due to secondary discrimination. And then finally, in the Rustenberg Platinum Mine versus Obo Peterson. In this matter, the judge pronounced that a workplace is exactly that and should not ordinarily be confused by a find me love sanctuary of lonely hearts club for love sick employees. Okay, thank you. Uh, so far, I will just end there and uh, ask for questions. Thank you so much, Mama, for a mouthful. Um, I thought your CV was a mouthful, but but even um, everything that you've spoken about is quite a mouthful. I really want us to talk about maybe um, under G, you know, under general, what discriminations, general discriminations, do people experience in the workplace? You know, I know that there are sexual um, harassments that happen for women or against women in the workplace, um, you know, sometimes they're even denied a job just because you're a woman. So that also is a discrimination or maybe because you are gay or, you know, so what are the general types of and forms of discrimination that people experience in the workplace? Uh, there are many forms of a uh, discrimination. Uh, some of them are very much hidden, you know, uh, you cannot be aware that you have been discriminated against unless you know your rights as a human being. So for me, first of all, what is important, you need to be aware of your rights, which are contained in the Constitution of South Africa. You don't have to be an expert in all these things, but just be aware, familiarize yourself with the Bill of Rights. What rights do you have as a human being? And also the same applies uh, in the workplace because when you go there to, to get employment, you go there because as a young person, you know, you've got your qualifications, you have been trained, uh, you have achieved so much, but you go there to offer your services in the work environment. But there are processes in the workplace that can enable you to be aware. For example, each and every organization 
must have an induction program for people to onboard a uh, new uh, employees that are coming into the work environment so that you can be aware of the culture, you know, the corporate values of the organization, your employer, what, what values, what do they believe in? Sometimes your values cannot be in line with the values of the organization where you are going. And that is where the first conflict starts. Sorry, ma'am. Um, talking about values, sometimes a person's values don't necessarily merge or are not in sync with the values of an organization. But then you take the job because you are so desperate and we know the unemployment rate in South Africa. Um, what happens then if I just took the job because I am so desperate to just get to work, but then we are just not in sync. Myself and my employer are just not in sync. What do I do then? Okay, first of all, it is very important that you have a list of your own values and the organizational values so that you can be aware because those ones, they need to be intertwined. For example, each and every organization maybe can have a, 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 a code of dressing up, you know, what kind of a corporate way, what kind of dress code is allowed what kind of communication is allowed, what kind of hairstyle is allowed. So if you as a human being, you need to make sure that you are aware of those before you go into that work environment where you will find that there is conflict in terms of values, your values and organizational values. But most of the time, these issues are covered during the induction program. So it is key, it is of paramount importance that you familiarize yourself with the policies. It is your responsibility. It is not the responsibility of the employer because sometimes they just run quickly through these things because organizations are there to chase profit. They are worried about the margins. They're not worried about the employees and the human beings. Hence, there is a department which is called human resources, which looks after the employees because human beings are the assets they contribute to the margins of the organization. Yeah. Uh, Matt, talking about the human resources department, I, I, I was lucky enough to be employed in, in government and then also to be employed in the private sector. Uh, but it came to my attention, and maybe this is a myth, I do not know, help, help us out here, that the human resources department in private are there for the benefit of the employer, not necessarily of the employee. Uh, that is why you might find that even when you do not, you're not in line or in sync with the employer, the human resources manager or whoever will always be on the side of the employer because, you know, it, it's profit driven, the company is profit driven. Is that how it's supposed to be, or is that maybe yet another way of discriminating against employees? No, it, it shouldn't be like that. But oftentimes, human resources, they tend to favor, uh, you know, the, the CEO, because the CEO is the decision maker. They have power. But it is about time that we change the scenario. You know, the board of directors must be the one who is setting the tone in the organization to say things like unfair discrimination, sexual harassment, and all these things are not allowed. And they must set the example. So it must be pronounced from the top so that human resources can be able to implement. It must not just be lip service, as you know, that human resources is just seen as lip service. They are just there to just, yeah. you know, just for the sake of, of doing it. Things should actually turn around. And I believe that there is a need for the introspection or a review of all the policies in the organization to make sure that they are aligned in terms of not uh, undermining, especially women in organization. Men are in the positions of power because all of this is about power imbalances. It is it's about patriarchy. Even in corporate organizations, men are in the higher echelons of the organization and women, 
they are just holding junior junior positions where they don't have any influence. Yeah. But okay, another thing about discrimination, we are finding it more and more that jobs are being sold to young people. Uh, so if you are desperate, I'm saying that when now that we're talking about discrimination, we find that we find that jobs are being sold to young people. So there is a job, um, an advert, an advert of a job. Then they tell you, in order for you to get this job, we you must pay 250 rand or you must pay 300 rand. How do young people differentiate and maybe know about 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 such those types of violations, um, for lack of a better word? And also, secondly, while people are in the workplace, you get a job that says you are a manager. But you are now being used because you're a woman. You're expected to bring coffee to your senior. You're expected to, you know, to perform um, personal errands to your senior. How do we empower young people, especially young women, to say no to to those advances? You know, because you're not there to be a tea lady if you're not employed as a tea lady. So how do I say no without putting my own job on the line? Okay, first of all, it is illegal to pay for a job. It is very much illegal. I think that is the first thing that as a young person, you need to know, you need to be aware that you cannot pay for any job. And as a young person, you need to be confident in your own abilities, skills and attributes because you have earned this position. Eh? You have worked hard studying at university or you know, being in, in the institution of higher learning. So you have earned the position. Don't go there and be timid and be ashamed of yourself as if you are being done a favor. They're not doing you a favor. You end the job, you went through the interview process and you have excelled. So the first thing that I want to advise young people, be confident of yourself, your skills, you know, and your attributes. And then mm. when you go into the work environment as a young person, it is always good to have a mentor or someone that you trust. Sometimes we call them buddies, you know? someone that you can relate to, someone who knows the organization, someone that you can re report to if you feel that you are uncomfortable. So on in all, know yourself, but it is illegal, very much illegal to pay for a job in South Africa. Um, you know, I, I, what happens if I am unfairly um, let go. You know, you are fired, but you feel like, no, this is, this is unfair. I'm fired maybe because I'm a yellow bone. I'm fired because maybe of the way I dress. Um, maybe because my manager does not like the way I dress. And therefore, they, they manage me out and to a point where I get fired. What recourse do I have in the workplace, or even outside of the workplace, to fight that and to prove that actually this was an unfair dismissal. Mm. There are various legislation which are applicable in the workplace to protect uh, employees. The first one is the Labor Relations Act. As I've said, you don't need to be an expert in these areas, but it is quite useful if you can just familiarize yourself so that you are aware of your rights. And then once an incident happens in the workplace, most organizations that got a labor relations department, you can go and uh, you know, put a complaint through the grievance procedure. But what is important is that you need to be sure of your facts. If you want to complain about anything, you need to be sure about your facts. You, you shouldn't have any doubt in your mind about your complaint. And then your complaint will be documented. The organization will follow the due processes. 
maybe there will be an investigation and a, a hearing will be conducted where you will be called in to come and state your complaint. So it is very important that you know you are familiar with all those processes. And sometimes you can even have witnesses who can come and support you, you know, to say a uh, so-and-so has been treated uh, unfairly and they are aware of, of the situation where, you know, your boss or your senior has been treating you uh, unfairly. But also maybe it might be, when, when is it also advisable for someone, if I have a problem with my direct line manager, um, that I be requested or I request that I move to a different department, uh, maybe my values and my, my manager's values just, or we just don't get along. Or maybe my manager's asking me for sexual favors and I'm, you know, I'm not about that line. So is it advisable for one to request to be moved to a different um, department or a different office altogether probably? Yes, yes, and that can be an option which can be looked at uh, to make sure that you are happy in the other department, as long as you make sure that your skills and your knowledge and competences will fit in the other department. Maybe you can even do your own research within an organization. If there are other positions which are being applied internally, then you can be the first one to apply and put a motivation to say you would prefer to be moved to another department. Yes, that is also advisable. Yeah. Now let's talk about one of the contentious issues. Um, sexual favors that many, many young people are asked for and young women are asked for in the workplace and they are so scared to say no. You end up sleeping your way up or you end up sleeping in order to get a job. How do I become a whistleblower without jeopardizing my opportunities of getting that particular job, especially if I feel like I did qualify for the job, I've worked so hard and my credentials speak for themselves. So how do we empower young people, but especially young women to say no to these advances and actually speak out without being jeopardized and eventually not getting a job? Because I think that is what young, a lot of young people and people in the, the workplaces are dealing with. Yeah. That is very important, and I think it's a topic on its own, because what we're planning to do as um, social justice women, together with uh, Women of Africa Arise, is to have a, a, a cohort or something like a boot camp for young girls who will be entering the workplace, whereby we're going to have a workshop and take them through the induction program on how to handle yourself when you go into the workplace. Because young girls are innocent. You know what I mean? You don't know what to expect. And then there is this senior guy who is coming seeing to give you a promotion. Because you are so innocent and you trust this person, you might not even be aware that this person is manipulating you. So hence, we are going to be having this induction program, I think, in June when there are school holidays so that we can empower young girls and they can interact with us and we can give them the necessary skills. But on the other hand, I think young girls should have someone that they trust, whether in the workplace or at home, someone that you can talk to, you know, someone that you can disclose to if you feel that you are uncomfortable in the workplace. And it is also important not to sit alone in isolation as a young woman. Be part and parcel of a structure. Maybe there are trade unions in the workplace. You can be part and parcel of a, a trade union because the trade union is there to protect the employees or be part of any network, you know, or the church. Today you are presenting in a church environment and this is a safe place where you can approach someone senior to you to say, you know, this is what is happening to me at work. 
do you think is it normal or is it abnormal for something like this to happen? So don't sit in isolation, but engage and be part of social formations that are around you. This actually takes me back to when you said that, that it, is, it is important for someone to find a mentor at work, you know, because we really, really are not um, islands, so no one can make it by themselves. My question was, is it, although it might be best to get a mentor in the workplace, but can somebody find a mentor outside of an organization? Yes, no one can impose upon you to say this person must be your mentor because you need to have a sound relationship with the person who is your mentor. So it is important. You can even have as many mentors as possible. You can have three mentors if you want to, you know. So a mentor cannot be someone who is imposed upon you by your employer. You can have a mentor at church. You can have a mentor in your community. You can have a mentor at work. All of them, they are assisting you, they are building you in different directions. Because mentorship is a relationship which is voluntary and you must be able to communicate with your mentor easily without any stress. And a mentor also opens doors for you and opportunities. Maybe your mentor can be the one who can identify and say, be careful of so and so, because as a young person, you are naive, you know, you don't see danger. But if you have someone who is elder, they can be aware and identify the danger for you. Uh, I'm going to play the devil's advocate against young people right now. <laughs> uh mama we i have found that young people sometimes can be so naive that they think they know what's best for themselves but sometimes as someone with experience when you tell them uh don't do this this way they feel like no i know what i'm doing um and therefore i will do it my way anyway what advice can you tell young people you know to say you don't have it all figured out um so have a teachable spirit as the bible say you know you must have a teachable spirit a lot of young people i don't think they have a teachable spirit they think they know it all yeah the the young ones are restless you know and they want to do it today they don't have patience and they look at us the elders as if we are slow but hurry is no speed, as far as I'm concerned. Hurry is no speed. It's better to have the knowledge, the wisdom, than to go there and bend your fingers. So what I would like to add to the young people is that they must not be over ambitious and aim for bigger things, which they have to take time to achieve. You know, this generation of today, they are so much moved with material things. Some of the things, I'm not saying that young people should not be ambitious, but sometimes it can put them in danger if they don't follow the, the right steps to achieve those things. I, I, I totally agree. And one, I was watching a, a TED talk one day and they were talking about the current generation who, want microwave success. You know, they yeah. want everything now. They want everything. So how do they deal with the environment, the working environment that we are from? You know, the environment that you have been a champion of for so many years. How does that environment um, welcome these, these young people who want things to be done now? Because clearly, the, the is not, it, it's not going to work. Because we know you need to take your time. Be patient with the process and trust the process. But young people don't really want to, be, to go with the process. And sometimes they are vulnerable to discrimination um, or violence even in the workplace. Yes, we live in, in, in difficult times, very difficult times where everything is like instant, like microwave. 
and the people they just want young people they just want to enjoy the benefits now they don't want to work hard and get the gratification at a later stage so i think there is a lot of work that we need to do in terms of training raising awareness advocacy for young people to say be patient you know work hard believe in yourself set your goals and at the end you will achieve the times are different and there is a lot going on like you know a young girls are being trafficked for the same reason because they can be called to say come for a job interview you know on whatsapp you can be invited to say come for a job interview in johannesburg you're talking to a stranger on social media you're talking to someone that you don't even know then you get into the bus or into a taxi and your parents they just kiss you goodbye they will never see you again because you haven't followed the right procedures for example if you are going for a job interview there's, there must be an official invitation. Nowadays, it's an email, you know, with the name of the organization, the venue, the time. And when you go there, there should be people who are respectable people who will be conducting the interview. So I also think social media, you know, plays a critical role in terms of confusing the young people in terms of achieving their goals. That someone can just believe a WhatsApp invitation and take a bus to Cape Town. And then, you know, they get killed. Um, let, let us talk about, you, you, you are a champion of social justice. And we know with patriarchy that there is a lot of social injustices that happen in the workplace. You might just be denied a job because you're a woman. You might just be denied a job because you are black. So, how do I know that I really did not get that job because of my credentials? Can I request notes of um, the interviews that were taken or, or that took place in that workplace? If somebody sends me an email and says, Salala, you did not qualify for the job, so we gave it to people. Do I have the right to say, show me the notes, show me the scores that I got um, versus the scores that people got in the interview? Yes, there has been a lot of uh, nepotism, you know, uh, if I can put it like that, uh, nepotism in the world of work, where there's a lot of uh, favors being done uh, for people to get into employment without meeting uh, the necessary requirements uh, for the job. Maybe sometimes people, they use their connections, you know, uh, name dropping, you know, if you know so-and-so, then they will speak to so-and-so, and then you get the job. Sometimes you apply for the job and yet you are just accompanying. You are just accompanying those who are going to the interview. They know very well that this job has been reserved for this person. So we are living in difficult times. Uh, all in all, you have a right as a prospective employee to ask for that kind of information. But usually the organization will say, this is confidential information. You, you cannot have access to it. And the whole process becomes a uh, tedious and laborious on your part because now you have to fight and we are still outside. You know what I mean? We are not in the work environment. We are still outside. So what I would advise is that it depends on the individual whether you really want to go that route because it is also emotional on your part. Now you are fighting to know why what the scores were and usually they will not give you that kind of information unless you go to the ccma unless you, you you follow proper channels you can go to the ccma and they are there to mediate on your behalf but there is a lot of nepotism and corruption out there
Yeah. I want us to talk about something that we hardly ever talk about. And this is discrimination in the workplace by women to other women. A situation where your boss is a woman and you are a woman and she discriminates against you for whatever reason. Most of the time, it is not because you are smart or you don't deserve the job. Most of the time it's because, oh, you're skinnier than I am. Oh, you, where do you get money to buy all of these shoes? Why is it that you're changing your weaves all the time? To a point where she discriminates up against you in terms of the work that you do, but most of the time there's no proof because you're probably good at your job. How does one deal with that? You know, and some of these women, they discriminate against you because they are the only person in a, manager, in a, in a managerial position and therefore they want to remain the only one there. So they, they're not opening the pool um, in order to welcome more black people and more young people to come in. So how do we deal with that? Yeah, it, it's just referred as the PhD syndrome. Like, you know, you don't want other women and young girls to reach the, the class ceiling that you have reached. It is unacceptable for women who have reach the glass ceiling to close doors for other women. Hence, we have all these uh, networks like the Women of Africa Arise. We are there to empower other women so that they can reach, you know, their purpose in life. Women who have made it in organizations should pull other women because I can tell you, it is very cold up there being alone as a woman. Because the men, they, they also isolate you. They don't want to interact with you. So the more you surround yourself with women, especially young women, because they've got new ways of doing things. They've got new ways of thinking. They are very fast with technology. So you can actually uplift yourself by surrounding yourself with other people. And even when you do your presentations, you look good because you have been assisted and you have surrounded yourself with other women who are there. So we are totally against the PhD syndrome. Yeah, and I think that on a personal note, that is really one of the worst things that we can do as women towards other women and amongst ourselves, because there will always be someone who's smarter than you. There will always be someone who's prettier than you who's taller than you, who's bigger than you, who's skinny. You know, you yes. are not the, you are not the it. <laughs> you know, so all of us are the apples of God's eye. And when we engage in this pull her down syndrome, even in the church, it doesn't make sense to me because we should make the circle bigger, but there are so many people and especially in the workplace, you know, who are so discriminated against by other women and other women who do not want to open the pool for more women to come in. Um, now, uh, someone is asking, what happens when you are expected to be one of the boys at work? So you are the only woman. Um, the question is, what do you do when you are expected to be one of the boys in the office? And I, I want to assume that this relates to when you are the only woman, and instead of you being womanly, being feminine, um, as you are, you're expected now to speak like the boys, to curse like the boys, uh, and you know, be one of them instead of being more of yourself. No, no, you know, women are different because women are caring by nature. Women are, they have compassion. And we need that kind of a um, feature in the workplace because the workplace is very much male dominated. So women, they bring a different uh, characteristic in the work environment where they can motivate and encourage and promote well-being within the workplace. You cannot be expected to change and behave like a man and stand uh, banging tables when you speak. No, be feminine, be yourself, be original. I always believe that as a human being, you must always be original. Don't try to be something or imitate someone that you are not. But women play an important role in senior management positions just because they are women. 
when you started your talk, you said a scripture came to your mind, the scripture about the rejected stone that became the cornerstone. My question is, do we always have to fight? You know, as a woman and you are rejected in the workplace, is it always necessary for us to fight? Or is it okay sometimes to say, it's fine, it didn't work out, I'll move on? Yeah, maybe if it didn't work out, I always say, don't look at the closed door, you know? Don't stay at the closed door. Maybe God had a way of taking you out from that environment which was hostile because God has a way of turning things around and don't fight, you know, just be yourself and God can do the revenge on your part because sometimes it can just be too much, you know, but each and every person, we know our strengths, we know what you can tolerate, you know what you cannot tolerate. But at the same time, I'm not saying that you must allow people to walk all over your head, but you cannot be someone who's just ready for a fight each on, a, on, you know, on a daily basis. Something happens, we are ready you know, for a fight. But don't stay at the closed door. Look for other opportunities and find something whereby you can express yourself and achieve and fulfill the purpose that God has for you as a woman. Sure, I really love that uh, because it is so easy for us to stay at the closed door as the be all and end all. And maybe another thing is sometimes, and I think we also need to heal from the rejection. When you are rejected in a workplace, heal from it before you go into another one because if you don't heal from it then you start bleeding in your new job yeah, yeah. You know, because of the scars that you experienced at your old one yeah yes uh, counseling for me is is key you know get support from your family you can meditate you can yeah. pray um your state of well-being, exercise, improve your mental situation, uh, get a, a, a psychologist to help you with healing, you know, that is key. Now, you also, Mama, you spoke about you have a responsibility to know the organization's policy. So is it, is it a norm? Because I find that people are becoming lazy to read. So you might go onto the company's website and you find that there are hundreds of policies and you feel like, ah, I'll just wing it. That can be detrimental, am I right? To someone's growth in the company and for your own self growth as well. Yeah, it can be detrimental if you don't know your company policies for example let me just talk about the performance management policy you know so if you don't know where your review is going to take place where your assessment is going to take place when are you due for a promotion when are you due for a salary review so it is very much detrimental also you must also show responsibility and interest you know, to the seniors to say this person is motivated, this person is keen to learn and to know more about the organization. It is not your um, the employer's responsibility to give you promotion, but if you know the policies that after six months there's a performance review, then you can prepare yourself and initiate the interview yourself, you know. But I think also that might actually save you from possibilities of violation or discrimination because then people don't, it's not easy for them to take advantage of you because they are aware that you know your story they're aware that you know yourself you know yeah yeah yes that that's correct because if you know yourself you portray yourself as such you don't portray yourself as someone who is timid someone who's shy 
as if you have been done a, a, a favor. You know what I mean? So the way you present yourself, they can see that you know your story. And, and knowledge is power. I mean, who can say no to knowledge? So maybe, yeah. I, maybe I, I think from my side, I would say, please empower yourself. If you are in the workplace or you want to enter the, the, the workplace, empower yourself. Another question, uh, we have four minutes, but hey, this is one of those conversations. Um, what can someone do if they are applying for a job and or they want to enter the job market in terms of learning about that particular company before they actually work for the company? Oh, yes. Most companies have got um, the website. So you can go into the website and learn about the company. Or you can even get an, an annual report, see how the company has been performing in the previous years. I think that is very key if you want to impress, you know, uh, the people who will be conducting the interview to say you have done your research, you know about the organization. And that is very key and crucial. So you can go into the website, get publications, get the annual report. And if you know someone who works in that organization, you can even ask them, you know, how is this organization about? And if the organization has been in the news, maybe on TV, or they've got a new product which they have developed, it is always good to talk about that product so that they can see that you are aware of what is happening in this organization. Yeah. But and also uh, for me, before I end, I think uh, self-development is key as, as yeah. a human being, leadership development, uh, participating in conferences, you know, participating in webinars like this, where you can mm. be empowered because knowledge is power. Mm. Self-development, yes. you don't have to wait you know, for an induction program, but register yourself on an online course. There are many of these courses now which are being done online and some of them are free of charge. At the end yeah. of the day, you, you get a certificate which looks good on your CV. Absolutely, I love I love the whole online courses because then you, you keep abreast with what is happening in the society. Uh, we have a question from Umfunis Nega and she says, how far does one's behavior on social spaces or in social spaces affect a job application? Or how far can one's behavior, can they affect uh, one's job application? Can you say that again? So the question is, uh, I'm going to read it again. How far does one's behavior in the social spaces can affect a job application? So sometimes we, on, on social media, we are always, as an example, uh, you are drinking, you're doing drugs and your pictures are out there uh, and then you apply for a job and companies start betting you and they see your social behavior. How can that, how can that affect your job application? Oh yes, that is very much detrimental to uh, your job application. I actually want to warn young people to be careful, you know, in terms of what they post on social media, because once you put something there, it's not yours anymore. It belongs to the world. Anyone and everyone can have access to it, yeah. you know, and they can just do a search and they find something that can be detrimental. So it, it is a warning that young people should be aware of what they put in there because yeah. it can work against them when the references are being done. Yeah. And I think also not just for a job application, if you are working for a company and you do something, you know, that is against their policy, for instance, and that's why you were saying, Mama Nduba, it is important for you to know the policies of your employment to make sure that the values and your values actually merge because they can fire you from something you did over the weekend. Yeah, for example, if you put something which is against your company organization, in that way you have put the organization into disrepute, you know, your organization has been tarnished, then you can be fired because of that. Yeah. So social and media, I, we, we need to be careful of social media, of what we post there. 
because it yeah. can work against that. Absolutely. And I think, thank you so much uh, for listening. Like, this is the one thing that young people need to know because we can be so obsessed with social media that we even lose focus, you know, of the fact that life is not just about social media. You have a life outside of social media and you still have a future. And you see now people asking for forgiveness from something they did in 20 um, or in 1997. And they say somebody um, uttered a racial slur on social media in 1997 and you have to account for it in 2021. You know, it shows, it, it really speaks to what you were saying that once you put it out there, it no longer belongs to you. You have given it to the world. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, this is ab absolutely something that is that just blows my mind. Whenever we are so proud to put all our dirty linen on social media as if we have no care in the world, it, it's really unfortunate. So thank you so much, Mama, for the conversation. But, uh, but I'm going to give you two or three minutes for you to give us your closing, uh, your closing remarks, maybe words of wisdom uh, for people, you know, what people should be thinking about and considering going forward in light of discrimination and violence in the workplace or their rights for that matter. Uh, in conclusion, I'm going to quote um, Mrs. Hillary Clinton. She said, human rights are women's rights and women's rights are human rights. So we all have rights, whether we are in a work environment or whether we are at home, we must uphold our rights because they were God given to us. Thank you. Oh, spoken like a true Bogoto. I just, I, I love it, I love it, I love it. Thank you so much. First of all, I would like to thank Women of Africa Arise for creating this space on a Thursday that we are able to talk to women like yourself. You know, women who under normal circumstances are not within our reach. Uh, women who, after you have spoken to us, now it makes us think twice and wonder what is it that we want to be like? What is it that we want to be known for as women? Do we just want to be the only or the first forever? So I am absolutely amazed by by you, for instance, and I'm so amazed by the women that uh, uh, Women of Africa Arise um, have within their network. And I pray that people who watch these programs get to learn a thing or two and actually realize how much of wisdom you guys have as a group of women. And I really, really, really thank you for that. And thank you so much for everybody who has joined us on the Facebook platforms the different Facebook platforms. Please, 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 as Mama said, know your worth and know your value because wherever you're going, they're not hiring a robot. They are hiring your character, your personality and your energy. So if you do not know who you are, um, you are susceptible to discriminations and violations. And learn, 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 never stop learning, never stop reading, never stop researching. It does not matter what it is that you read. You don't know the policies that your company uh, upholds so that you know when somebody comes and violates you, you know what your rights are in that workplace. And I wish everybody who's applying for a job or looking for a job, I wish you well and good luck. And I pray that God opens that door that you have long been waiting um, to open. Everybody who's going through hard times, in the workplace, I pray that God gives you the strength and the wisdom to always choose the better way. Because sometimes being right is not um, the only thing. Sometimes you just need better. And sometimes better could be outside of where you are at the moment. And I'm talking to those who have the PhD, the pull her down syndrome. I pray that the spirit of God works you right now so that you know that the person that you are violating is a child of God and you are going against creation because God has said that we need to take care of creation. Friends, let us pray and thank God for this opportunity. For yet another opportunity, another humbling moment to talk about your people. Another opportunity to talk about you in all of it, to talk about your omnipotence. Lord God, we thank you for these moments. We thank you.
for women who give of their gifts and their skills and who give of themselves to empower the likes of us. Women who say to us, know your worth because you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Women who say to us, you are the apple of God's eye. We thank you, Lord, for women who continue to make this series a success and who put out their word out there so that everyone who likes and who is ready and willing to learn is able to take and learn from them. Lord, I pray that you empower the Women of Africa Arise organization. I pray that you empower the Wesley Guild SA organization. I pray that you empower the church. I pray you empower especially the women in this world who continue to suffer great discrimination and great violations in the workplace and outside of the workplace. I pray that you can give us the strength and the wisdom to know that we can be better and to know that we are great. I thank you, Lord, as you cover us yet again when we go to bed tonight. And God willing, we wake up tomorrow morning because of your grace. I pray all of this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, everybody. Good night and God Thank you, bless you. Man. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Good night. Good night. Well Thank done, you so much, Mama. Thank you. Well you were amazing. Done,